Hello, this is Tony Heller from Visitech.ai. In this short video, we're going to become experts in the history of New York City shootings. We're going to start by going to app.visitech.ai. This is what the website looks like right now for subscribers. It will be changing some in the not too distant future. And we're going to be getting the historic New York Police Department shooting data from data.gov. I'm going to download the data by clicking on their download button. Now I'm going to drag the downloaded data into the graphing window. Now we have a Google map of the 28,503 shooting incidents in the New York Police Department database from 2006 to 2024. In order to analyze this data, I'm going to issue a series of voice commands after I click on the microphone button. Group by month and count the number of shootings. Now we have a graph on the left showing the number of monthly shootings in New York City from 2006 through 2024. You can see that shootings declined from 2012 until early 2020. But then there was a huge spike in shootings in New York City during June and July. Since then, shootings in New York City have declined, but they're not yet back to the same level they were at in early 2020. This huge spike in 2020 coincided with the lockdowns and the George Floyd riots. Now we're going to do an interesting experiment. Group by month and calculate the average latitude. Now we have two graphs, the shooting count and the average latitude in red. We don't want to look at the shooting count right now, so I'm going to exit out. Now I'm going to reset the zoom so that we can see the average latitude more clearly. You can see that the average latitude has been moving north, which implies that Brooklyn is doing a better job at reducing shootings than the Bronx is. So let's take a closer look at that. We're going to group by month and count the number of shootings in Brooklyn. Now we have two graphs, the average latitude and the shooting count. We don't want to see the average latitude anymore. You can see that the number of shootings in Brooklyn now is back down to the level it was before the George Floyd riots. Now let's do the same thing for the Bronx. Group by month and count the number of shootings in the Bronx. We don't want to see the Brooklyn data, so I'm going to exit out. You can see from looking at the graph that the shooting count in Bronx is higher now than it was in early 2020, so they have not fully recovered yet from the George Floyd riots. Apparently the Brooklyn police are doing a better job than the Bronx police. Now let's look at some demographics. I'm going to click on the Table tab so we can see what types of demographic data are available. The main ones are the perpetrator race, the victim age group, the victim sex, and the victim race. Let's take a look at the demographics. Group by perpetrator race and count the number of shootings. A lot of shootings they don't know who the perpetrator is, so I'm going to remove those from the graph to make it more clear. The data shows that about 73% of the shooters are black and about 2% of the shooters are white. Now let's do the same exercise for victims. Group by victim race and count the number of shootings. About 71% of the victims are black and about 2.5% of the victims are white. Let's do some more demographics. Group by perpetrator sex and count the number of shootings. After removing the unknowns, we can see that 97% of the shooters are male and less than 3% are female. Group by victim sex and count the number of shootings. 90% of the shooting victims in New York City are male and 10% of the shooting victims are female. 
Group by perpetrator age and count the number of shootings. You can see that most of the shooters are between 18 years old and 44 years old, and there's quite a few who are under the age of 18. One of the types of data we have available is precinct. Let's find out which precincts are the worst for shootings. Group by precinct and count the number of shootings. The red graph is the precinct shooting count. I'm going to X out the other graph and reset the zoom. Now we can see that the precinct with the most shootings is precinct 75. I'm going to select this from the table tab by clicking on precinct 75. That wrote precinct 75 down here and I'm going to click the send button. Now we can see the 1,676 shootings in Precinct 75 of Northeast Brooklyn. This is a Google map and we're going to zoom in and take a closer look at some of these neighborhoods. There's a lot of shootings on this block. Let's take a closer look. Those look like the steps to an elevated subway station. Might be best to avoid there. Now let's take a look at this neighborhood which has had three shootings. And we'll take a look at one more neighborhood before we wrap up. We've just scratched the surface of the types of analysis we could have done, but in less than seven minutes, we've become experts in New York City shootings. Visitech is loaded with features and in many ways is much easier to use than our competition, which is charging more than 10 times as much as we are. The current subscription price is $20 a month. Whatever your data needs are, we can solve them. We hope to see you at Visitech.ai.